In an unprecedented and practically unbelievable chain of events, the NCAA basically shut down college sports until the fall on Thursday. You lose all that momentum, uh, and it's hard to build the momentum. It takes years to build momentum. And then once you lose it, it's, it's like recreating the whole process again. We, we knew things were, were, were happening, right? It was happening quickly. Every time you turn on TV, ESPN had some report of something going on. So we knew that something was a, you know, was a possibility. But we got out there, we, we trained, we got down to weight, we worked out with everybody in the facility for three days, you know, and then uh, the night before we're supposed to, uh, you know, we had the NCA meeting, everything was set. All we had to do was make weight and wrestle the next day. And we, you know, we get a call and, and uh, so everyone was, you know, uh, I would say heartbroken. You know what I mean? Um, it was 7:30 uh, Thursday night when we got the got the call from the NCAA. We were in our hotel room when it happened. I wish, I wish I could say that I was surprised, but just kind of, I just saw where some other things were going and I kind of put two and two together a little bit sooner, but I mean, it, it was just depressing. It's just, you do all this work and, and you get to this, the highest point of the season and, you know, it just to get it stripped away, you know, it was a lot in that moment for sure. Like it, just the realization. I just remember how hurt everyone was because like everyone worked so hard during the season and and that's really the only weekend that really matters to our sport and so um i just remember everyone sort of bawling and guys were were crying and i mean it was i just felt terrible for the guys that that were affected by it at least for me personally like everything doesn't ride on that national tournament like i enjoy wrestling for the sake of wrestling but that's that time to really show everyone like like affirm yourself like yes i'm really good like i deserve this i put in the work and it all paid off and so to not have the opportunity to really wrestle the best guys in the country and just show like okay i can be here and compete with the best guys it's just like a very big letdown all right guys netty champs on three one two three Netty champs. i mean definitely coming in the national tournament you know wanting to get to get back on that podium, I think was a realistic goal that I set for myself again, following uh, a seven place finish in 2019. And, you know, there was a lot of hype going in there. I, mean, I, I think the guys were really ready to to come on the scene and we were gonna, we were gonna be in the top four or five. We probably would've taken home a trophy that, that year. And then you get all the recruiting after that and everyone comes up and they see. So that's the whole thing. You lose all that momentum. Uh, and it's hard to build the momentum. It takes years to build momentum. And then once you lose it, it's, man, it's like recreating the whole process again. It's, it's, it's difficult. In, in all sports, there's a culminating event at the end of your year that is like your goal. And at the college level, obviously, your NCAA championship, especially if you're an NCAA contender, that is kind of like your dream, your goal. That's where you want to be at the end of the day. And for so many of our guys to make it up to the point of going to the national championship and then have the plug pulled on the NSA championships um, that obviously really hurt because that's what they worked for months to accomplish. That's where they wanted to be. Um, that's where dreams of, of wrestlers in particular, but you know, other sports that qualify for NSA championships, that's where dreams are made. You know, we were heading into spring break. And so I just, I, we had a meeting, you know, it was kind of like, you know, 
uh, it was a bummer because, you know, we had seniors that weren't going to get to compete at the nationals, but it was also like, Hey, you know, we, we might, we might be in some serious danger right now. We might, you know, we, everyone should go home and be with their families. And we kind of don't know what the next, you know, couple weeks or months are going to look like. So uh, there's just a lot of uncertainty. From March until all the way through September, we didn't, we didn't train, we didn't practice. Um, I think after a couple months, our guys started getting a little stir crazy and they started finding, you know, underground gyms that they could train at, but they were doing that on their own. Uh, coaches were not involved. We weren't allowed. On the athletic side, it was just trying to navigate whatever, you know, was put in front of us and trying to figure out how to keep the team growing, developing as athletes too, in the middle of a pandemic where wrestling is probably not one of the um, most COVID friendly sports out there. So what what Lock Haven did and what a lot of other schools did is is we we opened a facility um, at an off campus site and we sanctioned it through our wrestling club and we used this facility to develop our our gray shirts and our red shirts. Finding wrestling partners and places to wrestle was incredibly hard. Like we have guys from New York, we have guys from Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Like I'm from Virginia. So like we were all over the place. So just trying to keep constant communication with each other, just so like when we came back, we still felt like a team. I mean, recruiting, you can you can email and have phone calls. Like that's not a big deal, but we couldn't have kids come and visit, which is a huge part of recruiting. Like you need kids on campus to see, you know, what makes us different from, I don't know, a pit or other ACC schools, like an NC State or UNC, like what makes Virginia Tech special. We had a whole bunch of visits set up for people to come to campus to take a look at it, and they couldn't come. You know, and, and a lot of our visits happen um, in the spring after their seasons are over, that type of thing. And we bring everybody in, we go to the open houses, and uh, we couldn't show our facility. got on campus and started practicing in uh, late January. Uh, we basically had a two week long uh, regular season uh, with like, I think we wrestled six or seven teams in a two week span um, on two weeks of practice. And then, you know, had another two weeks to prepare for the conference. I think that there was a lot of, uh, <laughs> you know, gratitude and relief and, you know, hey, we get to wrestle because, you know, our neighbors across the street at Penn were not. So, uh, you know, I think our presidents collectively got together in the Ivy League and said it's, it's safer for our communities to not have sports um, and particularly not traveling and going various places and trying to navigate the pandemic um, in group settings. Um, that was their thinking behind why competitive seasons and even athletic, you know, practice and comp like practice generally uh, could happen. I got to spend a whole year with my my daughters who were you know 11 and 12 years old at the time I mean it's probably the perfect time <laughs> to to be able to spend time with your kids and I was with them every day every day for a year year and a half and you know, I, I, I did everything with them. There was just a lot of nice quality time. It was a nice mental and physical break from, you know, the hustle and bustle um, of, of college athletics. You know, in, in all of this, I think wrestling really managed to get through a really difficult time, but not really skip a beat and continue to grow and evolve. Um, I think it also presented an opportunity for women's wrestling to get a little more attention and grow a little bit more too. So I think that was a really nice side byproduct of, of the pandemic is a little bit more attention on women's wrestling. And through COVID, I really realized that wrestling isn't everything. And it just kind of gave me a taste of like what life will be like after I'm done wrestling. Like 
and kind of helped me like figure out like what I wanted to do. And so I think just a, a new perspective is what you know COVID gave me. It, it made me love the sport again, appreciate the sport. I kind of learned like, hey, it's not guaranteed. You're not going to do it forever. So enjoy it now while you can. Life is unfair. Wrestling, wrestling is unfair. You you work so many hours and you just you work so hard all the time. You have to sacrifice so much. You know, I, I sacrificed that that one tournament, and um, but I, I'm a better person because I've learned how to overcome it through coaching. I mean, wrestlers and athletes in general are, are resilient people, so they're they're going to do what they need to do. You know. But I think they really uh, realized how important it was to them to compete and to actually be a part of a team and, and be in a program and that type of thing. Um, you know, and I think it just made wrestling stronger 